Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in Before America. we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Welcome back to part two. There was so many comments that we decided to sit exactly where we are right now because last week we gave you a question and answer yep. uh, review we're and we're going to keep going. And, and yeah. Same marker. Haven't put the cap on yet. It's it's really cool how we could do that. We we got it. We're going to show you how we did this. Yeah. That's what we need to get out. Walk out. All right. All right. <laughs> What's the question? We only got two minutes. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to read this thing. All right, this is from New American Toe Guy, 3633. So I'm seeing mixed videos. Do we or do we not use chemicals in our tanks? Not chemicals. The nice gentleman at some other place said, no chemicals and to only use water. Correct. And now mm -hmm. you're saying yes on using specific chemicals for the tank. Mm -hmm. Now this is based on an older video yeah. that we were try trying something else, and there's actually some new stuff that's even better. Yeah. Probably touch on and when that. we say chemicals, here's the thing. If you watch my videos, I don't say chemicals. Remember, we are wanting that flora inside our holding tanks to actually thrive, okay? That flora is bacteria. So bacteria, bacteria-based enzymes, something like that would help break down the solids. The question is, now when you hire someone, a professional to come clean it, what they're cleaning is the struvite on the sides, right? Adding water is not going to pull those minerals down or anything else, right? The chemicals, or I'm sorry, the bacteria that I recommend is to help break down your organic material that you're in, you know, putting into the gray tanks and in the black tanks. It doesn't get rid of the stuff on the sides. Now, let's think about this. You had a tank cleaning company say, don't do anything but put water in there. Hmm. What do they do for a living? They clean tanks. Right now, can that help? Yes. Here's the thing: keep your tanks, you know, uh, flush with water, but also have bacteria in there to help break down the solids. The, you know, the reason why we put bacteria in there is to prevent any type of blockages that we can get in there, and that's all. Right? Adding water in there also keeps it wet, which is great. But no chemicals, no, no, no liquid plumber or anything else like that. But bacteria, absolutely, I would. There is a chemical out there, or a digesting enzyme mm -hmm. that Matt makes. Yes. Um, uh, liquefy. It, we actually did a head-to-head -head test, and you can see how it actually liquefies. It, it's, it's amazing stuff. And one thing to help out, um, eat jalapenos. Bam. And you will liquefy. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. N.Elliot9122. Elliot. What do you think about a Norcold 10DC that dims the lights in the RV when you turn it on? It won't cool. The the it seems like the compressor is attempting to start when the lights dim, but no dice. All right. So let's explain what's going on. The Norcold, uh, uh, what was it? N ten. Uh, ten DC. Yeah, I'm so close. Ten DC. Which I don't know why they called it ten other than ten cubic feet. DC means direct current. They should have just said twelve volts DC. Anywho, it is a uh, twelve volt compressor style refrigerator. Any, you know, and it pulls roughly around eight amps. Now here's the thing, anytime you turn something on and the lights dim, that's indicative of a couple things, okay? Here's the thing, we have, you know, some type of resistance problem. If the battery is completely charged, you turn on a relative, it's not even a heavy load, but let's just call it a heavy load. Eight amps is what it's gonna pull, those, those are, uh, refrigerators. And you have lights dimming, that's indicative, that's a sign that you have a loose connection somewhere. Okay, however, it could also be a sign that your battery is not fully charged. Okay, what I would do is, rec what I would recommend is add another load, like go to your slide outs. What happens to the lights when your slides go out? Do the lights dim? If so, that's two different circuits, dim on your um, refrigerator and dim on your slides. That means your source, right? You've got a loose connection between your battery and let's say your breaker panel box. If it only dims on the refrigerator turning on and not the slides, well, then you've just isolated. Okay, it's only on that one circuit, or at least it's not on the other circuit. So that's how you kind of do some troubleshooting to find out where your problem is. Now, from there, I'd recommend check the battery. 
check your bus bar, and then check right behind your uh, circuit panel box, and then all, if all of those are good, pull out the refrigerator and check your connections to the refrigerator. Well, that's going to stink, but that's how you would do that. Or you can go to RVTAA and find yourself a technician qualified to do that for you. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you got some investigating. You do. You can turn off the converter and see what happens. Steve Craig, 4536. Well, everybody likes these numbers. I know. So he's born in 45 or 36, one of the two. First season that I'm de I'm dewinterizing. De I took the anode rod out. Uh -huh. I have a new one. Yeah. I can't remember if it seats all the way in. Seems like I can only get it about halfway in. The threads are, you know, halfway out. Yeah. Uh, I suppose if I fill it and it's not leaking, I'm good to go. If you fill it and it's not leaking, you're good to go. Um, yeah, you're going to have some there. But what I would recommend when you're dewinterizing, get a toothbrush and um, go ahead and clean out those threads because it's been sitting there a while. There could be some rust buildup. And so, you know, you're able to get that mostly in, but, you know, that's going to start gunking up. If it doesn't leak, totally true, it's fine, but before you put it in, toothbrush and clean up those threads. All right, RG Dancing Machine. I like that one. Why does my fresh water tank leak after I fill it up? <laughs> okay, did you walk away with the still being <laughs> All right, two things. He hit uh, the fresh water fill indicator. <laughs> right, that is, okay. If it leak, okay, one of two things. Either you have a hole relatively higher in the tank, and it only leaks whenever the water gets that high, which is probably what I think it is, or it's the overfill valve where you fill it up too much and now the water's coming out. All tanks should have an overfill uh, little valve up at the top, so that way, because we tend to forget, we'll turn on the water and walk away. The water's gotta go out somewhere, otherwise it's gonna bulge and fall out. I suspect you have a leak. A hole up at the top somewhere near the top of the sides. All right, so Sean RMZ asks, thank you friend for this info. If I wanted to install two lithium 200 amp hour batteries, do we need to do anything special to balance them before we plug and play? This is actually, uh, so we're gonna do a two in one here. Let's answer his question. And let's, sure. let's talk about what active balancing is and, and why that why new technology, yeah. the Big Beard Active Balancing, is, is probably going to be a All new right. thing in the industry. So I think in this particular case, he's got two separate 12 volt batteries. Puts those in. Uh, he said, before I connect those, do I need to balance those? In other words, whenever you buy, you purchase lithium batteries, depending on who makes them, the state of charge may be different. The question is, is if I put two batteries, I don't know the state of charge, I've got one that's 70% charged and one that's 90% charged, do I need to balance them? Well, uh, if you have the time, yes, you can individually, individually balance each battery, but you're not actually balancing each cell. And that's really what we wanna do. Um, if you don't wanna take the time in balancing them individually, this is what you can do. Go ahead and install those two batteries in and then plug it into shore power and let your battery charge your charge overnight, right? Because as one battery charges, the other one, if it's already charged, then all the charging will go over to the other one. You would just have to wait a day or so, but you're really not balancing the cells on the inside. And that would take more than a couple days because whenever the batteries are in a charge state, in other words, a float state, that's when the top balance takes place. If you really want to, you know, unless you buy one or two brands out there, I mean, three or four that do active balancing, you got to let it sit there on charge for days for those cells to be balanced on the inside. So this now segues into the Big Beard battery. We saw that out there, right? We've been building batteries for, you know, developing them for years, you know, trying to figure out, okay, here we're adding technology. Here's the problem. If you use them, you use them, you use them, they get more and more out of balance. And not everyone can be plugged into shore power and sitting on shore power for three or four days, five days, to try and get these slowly balanced up. So uh, we were able to, you know, basically compile all the best technology out there and put those in the Big Beard battery. Now on this one, uh, what we have done is we've added what's called active balancing. Now active balancing means it balances cells while the battery is being charged, hence the term active. Passive balancing, which is what most batteries have, they don't charge until that battery is completely charged, or they don't balance until that battery is completely charged and you are not calling anything for it. 
you bought your batteries to use them, mm -hmm. right? And if you're always stuck on shore power, sure, you can go with the passive balance. But if you're actually gonna use your batteries, man, you want all those cells on the inside to always be balanced so that way they all perform together. Think of it this way. If we were all over here push starting a car and we all pushed at different times, we're really not gonna go anywhere, <laughs> right? Okay, go, or go to, I always say go to a- uh, On three or- Yeah, or three, three or uh, after three, right? And that's kind of what's going on on the inside. So uh, if you already bought them, you know, plug them in, charge them up. But if you're still choosing a lithium battery, one thing you wanna look at is does it have active balancing? And we do know of one battery out there that does have active balancing. And that's the big beard battery. Oh yeah, it kind of looks like this right here. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, part two in the bag. Thank you. Yeah. No question. Stump this jump. In. No, I'm aware of. No, in. The, there. There's. <laughs> And, and there's, there's your tech, tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to RVTechCourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're out there in the video. Roll the bloopers. <laughs> Were you falling asleep there? Yeah. I was trying to do it in less than two minutes. So New I'm American seeing... Toe, T-O-E or T-O-W? T-O-W. That's good. Oh, check. Uh, right there. Ooh. Oh, that's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> ah, look at that. Hey. Nice.